In this example, we will calculate a second order Taylor polynomial, use it, and then find a reasonable upper bound on the error. Here we go. When we're calculating second order, we need the derivatives up to the second derivative. And I know the coefficients in my Taylor polynomial are of the form the kth derivative evaluated at the center, but then divided by k factorial. Okay. Well, if all I was doing was part A, this would be the only chart I would need, and then I could write out the second order Taylor polynomial. If we look ahead, we know we're going to be saying something or finding an upper bound on error. So you might as well go ahead and take one more derivative because of the Taylor-Lagrange theorem about the remainder. So we take one more derivative, except I don't really need over here. So I take the derivative. I don't need to evaluate this one more derivative at three. It's not anything I need. So I take one more derivative. Okay, wonderful, here we go. One more thing I should say. This function, we can just write this as a single power. It's x plus one to the three halves. And this will make our life a little bit easier. My original function is here. Now I start differentiating. This technically is a chain rule, except the inside function has derivative one. So it looks just like power rule, even though it is a chain rule. We have minus one half power. Then I need one more derivative. So I have a minus three over eight, x plus one to the minus three halves. Okay, fantastic. Now I start evaluating at three. Well, three plus one is four. This will work out nicely. Here I get four to the three halves, which is eight. Here I have three halves, square root of four, which is three. And then I have three fourths. Here the square root is in the denominator, which gives me three over eight. And this part I don't need. I don't need to evaluate. Sometimes when I'm doing this, I'll put lines because I don't need to evaluate there. This comes in part B. Then I divide by k factorial. Zero factorial is one, one factorial is one, two factorial is two, okay? So these are my coefficients. Now I can write my polynomial. Maybe I'll do it right here. That t, two, f, x, three, which stands for the second order Taylor polynomial of this function centered at three, equals, now let's write it, we have eight plus three x minus the center, plus three over 16 x minus the center squared. This is part A, okay? Now, Maybe I will put a line here like this, and I have this room to do part B, okay? Part B, the first thing we need to do is estimate this, the square root of 4.4 cubed. Well, we need to figure out what x is. If we look at this function, we see x plus one to a power. This is f of, well, that would say that x plus one must be 4.4, or here, 3.4, right? Certainly, if you put 3.4 into your function, you get 4.4, okay, to the three halves. So this number is f of 3.4, and the reason I need to define this particular x is because I will 
evaluate my two goes at the top evaluate my polynomial at 3.4 to get this approximation which this now approximately this here is my polynomial so I have 8 plus 3 0 0.4 plus 3 over 16 0 0.4 squared this is if you calculate 9.23 now we move on the error well my center is 3 I'm using the polynomial at 3.4 so I can when I'm trying to find a bound for error I can use the interval between my center and this particular value and this will come up right now so my error which is 2 f x 3 will be equal to its absolute value of the remainder and we know by Taylor Lagrange theorem this will be the third derivative at some c over 3 factorial x minus 3 cubed where c is in this interval between 3 and 3.4 and we don't solve for it now this equals let's fill in this is why I calculated this derivative when I take absolute value I get 3 over 8 in my denominator I have c plus 1 to the 3 halves in my numerator well okay I have one more thing here which is a 3 factorial now in my numerator what do I have it would be absolute value x minus 3 cubed except between 3 and 3.4 absolute value x minus 3 is non-negative so I can write x minus 3 cubed and my next goal is to see how large can this part with the C be this derivative how large can that be on the interval and how large can x minus 3 cubed be on the interval and I will have two less than or equal to statements and altogether have an upper bound for the error okay first of all let's look at this well think about it in an absolute value where I only have a positive maybe I will underline here in red I am only looking at my derivative term at the moment okay except the three halves is included this part this function that I have boxed in red is decreasing well because we have a fixed numerator and the denominator is growing so it's a decreasing function therefore the largest it can be is on this endpoint okay so we may say that this is less than or equal to we have a 3 over 8 and now I put in 3 for C it's the largest it can be if you're between 3 and 3.4 which would be 4 to the 3 halves and then maybe I will just leave the rest here for this one step and we have an x minus 3 cubed and I will clean up some of the coefficients perhaps in my next step okay now how big can this be well the largest x minus 3 can be, or x minus 3 cubed can be on this interval, it's the other endpoint. It's here. So this thing, the largest this can be on the interval from 3 to 3.4 is here. Okay, which would be 0.4 cubed. So I put another less than or equal to the numerator I have a 0.4 cubed and then I can do some things with the denominator 4 to the 3 halves is 8 times 8 
64. I have a 3, the 3 factorial, it's just going to be a 2. So I can have a 64 times 2 or 128. Okay, that's this, 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 and this, <laughs> all simplified. It's just 1 over 128 times this number. This gives us an upper bound on the error in this calculation. We could get this as a decimal easily because here, for example, point or 4 cubed, I should say, is 64, but then I move the decimal place over 1, 2 would be 3 times, and then over 128, and then well, this also is not too bad. 64 over 128 would be a half, but then I can again move the decimal place over 1, 2, 3 to here. And this is this upper bound on error entirely as a decimal. So either one of these answers here is perfectly fine to give us an upper bound on the error of this approximation. Maybe what I will do at the end of this video, I will include a graph of this function together with this second order Taylor polynomial and show the difference between the actual function and this value. And we will see, hopefully, that the error is less than 0.0005.